Our final honoree is uh, someone who I consider a really, a really good friend. Someone who I also respect tremendously, who has been a very powerful presence in government here in New York State, as well as in New York City as well. And I think someone who was overdue for recognition. It's an honor to fall forward the Honorable Jose Rivera, member of the New York State Assembly. that happened around our life 
does not happen by accident. That's right. It happened when you organize, mobilize, and take advantage of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. On such a very important month, Black History Month, yes, we are making history. Did we plan it that way? Maybe not. But I give a lot of credit to this young man, Jeff Aubrey, because he must have saw something. And he moved quickly, just what we saw, just what we read in the newspaper, that there was gonna be a great opportunity. And this young man called a meeting of the caucus, an emergency meeting at 11 o'clock, when no one was thinking in this state government to be meeting anywhere at 11 o'clock. He brought us together. And the first two people in the room, I'm gonna tell a quick story of my speaker. The first two people in the room are the two most likeliest individual that you would want to see in any other room. I didn't say our room, any other room. And that was Charles Barron and this Jose Fibre. that there was an opportunity. Shame on us if we didn't recognize there was an opportunity for a member, one of us, to become speaker of the Great State Assembly of New York. <laughs> After a while, others came in, and my friend Carl Hasty walked in to say something. I remember asking, you're not declining, are you? <laughs> and he left the meeting, and we agreed that we had to walk out of there with only one candidate. So I got to thank Keith Wright because he withdrew his uh, name, took his name out, and then we had one candidate. That's how it happened. Now, how I get to this place? I didn't drive up here. I was born up here. Back in 1955, mm. by a great leader, Rosa Parks mm. was my leader. Mm. When I was a young man, brought on the beach, a teenager, for my safety, New York finest would tell me, go to Section 1 by the rocks in Ocho Beach. That's how, that was what was happening in 1955. So, this was not happening in the South. This was happening in the South Bronx. That's where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Section one by the rocks, that was our section. It began to change because we saw our great people there to challenge America in those days. Ugly America in those days. Stand up and risk their life in those days. That's how I got here. I got here because I'm a product of the civil rights struggle. Mega Evers, Mega Evers, Mega Evers dedicated his life for the right for people to be able to register to vote. Well, I thank Reggie Zabel and the civil rights struggle because of Puerto Rican who practically suddenly fluently broke in English <laughs> was able to register, vote, and eventually run for office. Me. Yes. Yes. With my in That's how I got here. Yes. Captain Napoli. You didn't have to do this for me. <laughs> my wife is already happy with you since 207. Could you chat? You, you sign my check. <laughs> coming back to this great body on a pickup. <laughs> <laughs> 
207. We had a governor that said, do it my way or is the highway. Yeah. That governor attempted to tell us who he had for controller. I want to dare do this right now because I don't know if time limitation or whatever is fine. <laughs> but I recall getting up after everybody spoke and there were some numbers that were concerned because this governor was saying that he was going to go into our district and campaign against us. <laughs> Tom is the best witness I have among others here. I finally raised my hand when everybody spoke. And they were concerned. I remember a speaker saying to all of us, and Carl was there, the speaker said, you know, we gotta work with the editorial writers because they're on the side of this governor. I get up and I said, I was never, and my kind of people will never get elected by the, whatever the editorial writers say back home in New York City. If this governor think that he's going to intimidate me and shake me down, and if he begins to drive up the East River Drive, to go come on stage, he has to come across the Willis Avenue Bridge. <laughs> and, and I can't repeat you. He's my witness. Too much of a nice man. He didn't, he didn't want to share this part of what brought him into this point. In front, in front of 151 member, I grew up in the South Bronx, in the Hunts Point section. Well, take your time. And I am not the kind that will stand here and allow anyone to think that I will let them get away with attempting to shake me down, threaten right. me in any way. to the editorial writers. I said, before he gets across Willis Avenue Bridge, he will not only have one flat tire, but he will have four flat tires. <laughs> I am very proud of what I've witnessed and I'm faithful this part of me. I was called together by my friend Jeff Aubrey. And what we did in that meeting, that we took it to the conference room where 151 of us gathered. And I was proud to hear some of our finest new elected officials like Brother Michael Blake get up there. Right, brother? And he said, we got to move on. We're going to select a speaker right now. And we got to put this behind us. And I got to say this also. And then there were those who attempted to recapture a moment. And I remember Charles Barry getting up and said, the first one to get up and said, oh. Now we're going into a strategy of reform, reform, reform. That means there's an attempt to tie down the hands of all of us and our new speaker called Hasty. Mm. It ain't gonna happen. That's right. Okay. Yes, we need reform. But we need those of all of us, listen to what Carl said. I believe he's up to the job, number one. I said it publicly all over. But we need to rally around our speaker. Yes, Lord. Because if we allow any editorial writers to get away with it, That's right. maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but when David Dickens became mayor, <laughs> they never gave him an opportunity That's to right. be That's a right. good mayor. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then they took his so as we leave today, I make one commitment with my nearest and my daughter, who has now became the official camera person. <laughs> I make one commitment. 
and there is a thousand people here that we are going to make a thousand copies. You call our controller's office, and he will give you a thousand copies. <laughs> and this is historical. And at the end, it it's going to have my name on it. Okay? <laughs> I want to thank you for paying my salary in time. <laughs> and I want to That's thank you because if our dear governor is allowed to get away with it, mm -hmm. he has sent us a message that says, unless we vote for whatever he's proposing, some of us, I guess, we, we have no problem voting for him. But there is no need sending the wrong message that says, unless you vote this way, you will not get paid. Uh -oh. mm. No, that's not good. Mm. I said, no, no. no, no. That's, not way, that's not the way to remind you to do this. If there is not a budget in time, it will be not too hard for me to explain to the editorial writers, because it happened before, how my family received a love check of some $20,000 from back pay because as legislators, if we don't vote for the budget on time, we don't get paid until we finally vote for the budget. Wow. So I have no problem. If there is no budget in time, I'll wait for when you sign that big love check. <laughs> We're gonna, the checks are not going to bounce. <laughs> and I don't have to explain too much. Because you signed the check. So, okay. I, I want to thank you, my friend. Uh, I look forward to uh, working uh, with you. With you. One of the most respected and loved Elected official of the state of New York, right. controller, top in our